Hey, how's it going, everyone? How you guys doing tonight, today, wherever you're from in this beautiful world? Welcome to uh, Recipe and Review Time with just me, Beer Man. Um, <laughs> let's see if we can do a little better than last week. I did pull off a pretty decent Imperial Stout after all, though. I had to look at it. Crash Metal had uh, talked to me about it as well. I appreciate that. Um, start from the base and kind of go up with your specialties as you do it. Don't just get all hyper and crazy and throw all those things in there and expect yourself to understand where to go from there. It's like it's like a maze that throws you off a bit, actually. Start from the bottom, go up. But, um, yeah, no, I think it'll be good. We'll see. So, cheers, Thrash. <laughs> Smokey Ninja, what's up? <laughs> J Jacob, Jacob, how's it, man? Flacco's Beer Reviews, man. How's it? How's it? How you doing, y'all? So wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, well, cool. Let me get this banner off of here because it's annoying me. I took my name off, too. Y'all, you know my name already. Well, my channel name. Some of you know my real name. Um, so I thought, I thought what I would do this time first real quick. Because I do, I do want to go on beer chugs, try and make his thing again. So I want to try and make this fast. The English porter is so it's it's an easy recipe. Three three malts, two hops, a London or an English yeast, and your Irish moss. You know, a uh, very simple recipe to build. So hey, miscellaneous. Cheers, brother. Thank you, brother. All right. All right, all right. So, yeah, I, I mean, a fair, I mean, I pretty much already said what I'm going to do. Um, I was going against, uh, I was, I wanted to use Maris Otter, but then I was like, eh, I'll just use Pale Malt because it's just as effective uh, for an English style. And I'll, I'm sure a lot of them over there use two row, American two row pale ale malt, whatever. The <clears throat> Sorry, I just downed an IPA. This is my favorite beer in the world, style in the world. Let's go with that's 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 very. Let me tell you what kind of IPA. Actually, I, I really like milkshake IPAs. I really like um, I like I like the any IPAs. Those two, the sweet ones, the less bitter. But I also like the bitter ones. I like the West Coast. I like the Northwest. I like the I love the American IPAs. You know, if they're fuck. I mean, you make a good good IPA. I'm going to love it. So I like all IPAs. <laughs> Give them to me. I don't like the brute IPAs though. Ooh, those are weird. <laughs> Hello, Dank. What's up, man? Cheers, bro. Thanks for coming by, man. Would you nitro any of your recipes? I, I'm not really into a nitro beer. I've had a couple that are pretty good um, for the sake of it all. I mean, that I don't know. I don't know if I would ever do something like that. I don't know why. I just, but it's just my opinion. <laughs> um, but good, good question. Um, I'm going to start off with the mail. A little, just a, I already knew what I was getting. It was something I ordered, and I'm kind of, I, I wanted to kind of just show it off. It's kind of cool. But um, I'm kind of wanting to look at it. it. They've updated their their schematics of this uh, this this tool. That I purchased. So, <clears throat> do this real quick. And what happened with that? What is up with that? Damn, internet's been going crazy lately, huh? All right, look at this. So I got one of these, man. You brewers will know what I'm talking about when you see it, but I ended up getting a beer gun. Um, I had one before, and I thought they were marvelous. They shoot the uh, CO2 in there and get them all pepped up and ready to go when you bottle, and you don't have to use priming sugar, and it gets it all like carbonated within five to seven days. It's amazing. Um of course, you probably want to condition your beer so it has a nice flavor overall. But yeah, cool. Let me open it real quick. I gotta hurry. Fuck. 
comes with the case. I never had it like this before. They did a real good job with this. So the instructions, it smells like tube. All the tubes, all the tools, a little gas thing for the corny keg, cleaners for the tubes, replacement O-rings, and then this cool gun, man. And it's all like plastic now and all cool. Like, man, I think it's, uh, I think you, yeah, you have like a thumb lever that lets out air and then the other fills. And it's got an unbreakable filler tip. The last one was kind of weird. So that's cool. Sweet, man. Um, we'll just put that over here for now. I'll deal with it later. Oh, here. There's another thing. Okay. Sweet. Wow, 89. Hey, what's up, 89 Mattel? How you doing, man? It's very good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Vanessa Katie, it's always good to see you too, man. Very good to see you. Right on. Talk about some of the food you're going to make soon. I, I really get hungry when you start talking about food. <laughs> Color me intrigued. Right on, man. Hell yeah. It's good to see you guys. This is great. <laughs> so let's do a beer review, man. But first, I want to go over some characteristics of an English or a brown porter, if you want to call it that. Um, there's a lot of intertwining between the porter and the stout so it's they were called in time and now they're just I, they call them an english porter to distinguish them from any other of the other porters they all have their own statistics vital statistics and everything else um i'm not gonna do history yet because i want to do a re well let's do history first get it over with hey alex how you doing cheers <laughs> So um, the English porter, okay, previously known as a brown porter or a porter, it's what they just call them porters in London. Uh, they originated in London around 300 years ago, early 1700s. Uh, English porter uh, name was given to distinguish it from other porters described in uh, BJCP's guidelines nowadays. You know, um, it's just it's, it's a way of distinguishing it between others. And they all have their own little statistics, like I said, all the, uh, the own little ABVs and their own little IBUs and blah, blah, blah. You got your robust porter. You got your uh, English porter. You got your American porter. You got your imperial porter. Blah, 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 blah probably. I don't know. They have imperial porters, I'm sure, right? I, I'm retarded if I don't think they do. Um, so how did it start? And this is from BYO.com. How did it start? The most common story holds, of course, they have an imperial porter. Uh, the most common story holds that there were several sorts of beer available in each pub, variously known as pale, brown, and twopenny. It was common practice for the publican to serve a runner of a pub to serve individual pots containing a mixture of three or even four beers, all of which had to be drawn from its own separate cask. In 1722, Ralph Harwood, a brewer at the Blue La at the Blue Last in Shoreditch, East London, came up with a single beer, a single beer that was supposed to match the flavor of these mixtures. He called it entire butt. But it <laughs> but it soon became known due to its popularity with the manual laborers of London's many markets. Um, it evolved from earlier sweet brown beer, which was popular at the time. It evolved, it evolved several times due to various technical as well as consumer preferences. It's a tad, it, you know, they, they've been changing it forever and ever and ever, and it finally, um, and I'm sure it'll continue to change. This beer style became a very pot or, or go into something more. Uh, I mean, I look at IPAs for crying out loud. Um, so this beer style became a very popular and widely exported style in the 1800s. Then around World War I, it declined and then disappeared in the 1950s. In the 1970s, craft brewing started to get all crazy. Started to get, it was reintroduced during that era, during the craft beer era. It is a parent of various regional interpretations over time and a precursor to all stouts. 
which were originally called, like I said, stout porter. No connection between a mild and a porter. Um, until later in the 19th century, when chocolate malt was invented, black malt was the only alter alternative to brown. Black malt gives beer a bitter flavor, so porters produced from pale and black malt had a somewhat harsher taste than those produced from brown malt. In effect, beers brewed in this way were a different type of porter and are now sometimes referred to as a Victorian or a robust porter. So it's all in the malts that you're using. Um, the IBUs on a top on English are 35. I don't know what an American is. I'm sure it probably is a bit higher. Um, just because you know us Americans, we like to go higher, we like to get higher. Uh, <laughs> So uh, there we go. Let me get back to you guys. Sorry about that. Just start reading away. Oh um, man, we got we got some great people here. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it, man. This is great. Patch of heaven, patch of heaven. Cheers, cheers, cheers. All right, man. <laughs> so let's learn. Uh, let's let's figure out. Uh, let's get a beer going. Um, fuck. Let me get the uh, statistics real quick though. I got to hurry this up. We're going. We're going. Okay, so uh, characteristics, uh, vital statistics. Let's start with that. From BJCP, the IBUs, the International Bitterness Units, how bitter this beer is should be 18 to 35 IBUs. The color or the SRM uh, is 20 to 30. The OGF, the OG is 1040, 1052. FG would be 1008 to 1014. ABV would be 4 to 5.4 percent from from craftbeer.com they kind of they kind of mid-range it i think or they go over and under like bjcp but they're they're 20 to 30 on the ibus 20 to 35 on the srms and 4.5 to 6 percent on abv so uh overall impression <laughs> Sometimes you should let me help with your upload quality, my friend. I can help clear up the ditters. Oh no, yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I uh, I know latency and all that. You were mentioning that before. They they don't let you do a whole lot with uh, Streamyard. It's a lot of it's because uh, people are so many people are on here using Streamyard at once, and that's that's what I've always taken from it. But I could be wrong. Um. Flacco's cheers, man. Had a victory at sea for the first time yesterday. Best port I ever had. Short career. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, overall impression of this would be moderate strength brown beer. Uh, restrained roasty character and bitterness. It may have range of roasted flavor generally without burned qualities. Often has a chocolate caramel malty profile, which uh, would be... I believe from what I was reading comes from the caramel, like I think 80 is what I'm using on this one. So it give you a little more of those caramely uh, multi, uh, multi notes and flavors. Um, Craftbeer.com, uh, things not mentioned on BJCP, medium to medium malt sweetness, hot bitterness is medium, less alcohol in body. The appearance from BJCP. Is uh, and that BJCP for those that don't know is the judge. It's basically the I don't know that how you I don't know the abbreviation. Um, beer judges something something, but um, light brown to dark brown in color, often with ruby highlights held to light. Has a good clarity, maybe opaque, moderate off white to light tan head. Good to fair head retention. And things that craft beer said that BJCP did not is slow to fast rising bubbles. I didn't get that on BJCP. Uh, BJCP also says moderate to moderately low bready, biscuity, and toasty malt aroma with mild roastiness. May have a chocolate quality. May show some non-roasted malt character. Caramely and or sweet. May have up to a moderate level of floral or earthy hops. Fru fruity esters, moderate to none. Uh, what you smell and even in what you taste on the fruity esters, diacetyl or diacetyl, however people say it, is low to none. Craftbeer.com says hop aroma and flavor, none to moderate, not perceived to medium. 
Fruity esters may be present. Phenols not common to style. Alcohol is mild. Uh, it's a low, usually a low, it's a low ABV for the English uh, porters. Somewhat low anyway, yeah. Hop bitterness is medium. Uh, let's see here. So flavors, moderate bready biscuit, a lot of the same things in the smell. Secondary flavors like coffee, coffee, licorice, biscuits, or toast. Significant burnt or harsh. Should not have significant burnt or harsh roasted flavor. Uh, uh, small amounts may contribute to a bitter chocolate complexity. Earthy or floral hot flavor is moderate to none. We said all that shit. Um, medium light to medium body. Moderately low to moderately high carbonation. Light to meet moderate creamy texture. Uh, body would be mouth coating, finish length, medium to long, attenuation, medium high. You were to should serve this in a nonic glass, a nonic pint. It's a glass that bulges out at the top, which improves your grip, it adds strength, and reduces chipping. Interesting, eh? Uh, serving temps, 50 to 55 degrees, which I should probably pull mine out now. That was no pun intended. Um... Commercial examples would be Piney River Brewing Company, Old Tom Porter, Holy City Brewing Company's Pluff Mud Porter, uh, Back East Brewing Company, their Porter, Burton Bridge, Burton Porter, Fuller's London Porter, Fuller's makes some good beer, Nethergate Old Growler Porter, and Samuel Smith Taddy Porter. That's a good beer. So there you go. Statistics done. Nice, Flacco's. <laughs> I try not to be too boring. I, you know, I got to pep it up with my, my own, like, humor. Sometimes I am boring as shit. So uh, let's get, I have another one from Puhala, but there, I'm going to, I'm going to, if I have enough time, I'm going to do that one. That's more of an American style uh, porter. It's more peppy. They're, they're actually out of, uh, I think, Netherlands or Iceland or something like that. Um Okay, I didn't see that in anything I read or anything, but I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> they, their, their main thing was um, a core, about, a, about one to two pounds of caramel, 80 in this instance. Most of it, your pale, uh, of course, your base, and then... One to two cups of caramel 80 and about or pounds, and then about uh, a third of your grist would be the chocolate. Um, that's just a basic, uh, a basic recipe, keeping it simple. But uh, carapils definitely ha helps with head retention and 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 your body. Uh, so that I totally agree with. Cool. Um, so this one here, I'm going to get this, uh, closest one I have to a, a nonic. It's got a bulge, but it's kind of dumb. Um, this is a machine house brewery there. It's a bottle conditioned beer. They make small batches. It's a 5.4% English style Porter. It's serving a pint 0.9 fluid ounces. It's a classic Brown Porter with notes of chocolate malt clean finish. Um, so yeah. Serve it 50 to 55, they also say. I'm trying to see where it's from. Seattle. They're out of Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Cheers, beer hounds. Cheers, man. All right, man. So I'm just reviewing a uh, classic English porter here. We're going to make an English porter, English browns. Let's do it. Carapils sounds good, though. That's that's. I've always used carapils in all the recipes I did in the past. They always did. I mean, look at that bod. Look at that head. <laughs> I'm sure they had some carapils in that. <laughs> Jesus, we got a hand head, a uh, four finger head. See, I, I'm probably gonna dip my nose in this sucker. 
Yeah, it's got like that slight, like a light. It's very light, though. It's very light. It's not super dank or crazy deep. You know, it's not rough. It's not super ABV forward sweet. And it's just got a nice crispy smell to it. It has like a brown bread chocolate kind of. Um, I don't get any. Uh, I get more chocolate. I get more of like a, 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 a semi sweet chocolate or something like that. Nice, like a brown sugary, maybe even a light brown sugar kind of note coming out of it. That's nice. A little toffee coming out. Look at that head, right? <laughs> right. That was the beer, man. So the, <laughs> we got to hurry here. Hey, it's a good thing this recipe is going to be fast. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's a nice tan head. Uh, retention is very nice. It's already down to three fingers in about a minute or a minute and a half or so. So it's got good retention. Um, it's kind of a soapy look around the edges. It's real soapy. It's a, it's a dark brown, a deep, rich, dark brown. And it's got a little haze in there. It's not super clear. There, It's not – you can see like a, like a cloudy hue at the bottom. So I can see haziness. Um I'm assuming it's a clean beer, you know, we'll see. Let's go ahead and taste this. What's uh bubbles are like a medium rising bubble. It's definitely bright, crisp mouthfeel. Kind of um, a uh, more of a medium, I'm probably a light medium, medium light, a leading, uh, <laughs> you know what I got, you know what I'm saying. Uh medium light, light medium fuck. Mouth uh, shit. <laughs> Body. Um, sorry, I had a little uh, smoke earlier. Um, it's a, it's 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 not it's not a medium body. Let's put it that way. It's a it's a light medium body. It's a it's got that crispy kind of edge. It's kind of light, like kind of watered down feel to it. I mean, it's what a four four five four seven. Yeah, five four. So it's not not bad. It but it, you get the chocolates, they come through, it's real nice. Pushes up on the palate all around the tongue. You're getting then you get this like chalky kind of a ah, like an herbal bitterness in the back in the finish. Kind of a tangy. Uh, I don't get uh, any fruity esters or anything in the flavor aroma, but I get this real nice kind of a not burnt but kind of uh, just more of like a, a baker's chocolate kind of bitterness in the fin. Very smooth, though. It's very, like kind of creamy, kind of nice. It's actually more tangy around the edges of the tongue. Towards the back, it's real tangy. Yeah. Um, it is it is pretty roasty, though. It almost has like a robustness to it. I don't... I don't know, man. Because I get kind of an espresso coffee out of this as well. It's nice, though. It tastes good. Kind of burnt tasting. And what I was reading, it said it didn't want to be, shouldn't, shouldn't be burnt tasting um, for this particular style. So I don't. It does have floaties in there. Oh, it was bottle condition. I forgot. Okay. Hey, Psycho Ducky. All right, man. <laughs> yeah, this is a definitely a sessionable beer. Sessionable. Light. It's, uh, would I buy it again? I don't know. It wasn't, I don't know. Out of uh, five hops, I'd probably give this, uh, probably give it a. 3.85. Yeah, somewhere in that range. Yeah, it's not bad though. I wasn't extremely happy about it. Let's get onto a menu or a menu. Let's, let's make a menu. Let's make a recipe though, seriously. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to keep up my main thing here. Conditioned in the bottle, not fermented. 
so they don't filter it. They just let whatever's in there go back up in there and do whatever it's got to do, and then some. It can stay on the shelves for a while and condition itself. And shelf life, you know, it's darker beers you can hold, hold on the shelf a little longer, especially if they're bottle conditioned. Because it's still eating more sugars and still doing its thing. Might have even been a good idea to even hold on to it, get another one of these and hold this for a while. Try it in about six months. Who knows? Um, let me kill some stuff here. I <laughs> kill enough ants today. All right. Uh, I'm going to share screen. We're going to open up. You can see my notes there. Open up Beersmith. <sighs> All right. Got to chill with my favorite beer, man. Don't forget to face plant that like button. Smack it like a naughty button is. Hell yeah. Thank you, Psycho Ducky. So good to see you, man. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> okay. What's up? Meow, meow. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. First, we're going to select. So this will get a little boring. I'm sorry. Hopefully, I can make it quick. So we want to, um, what, what was it? What am I doing again? English Porter. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, here we go. Name is Beer Man. Oh, I did the wrong thing. Hold on. Um, and, uh, beer man. Okay. To Kegel. Uh, take, change that to 10 gallons. 10. I got to fix this. I still haven't done that. 60 minute boil time. I mean, I've been, I read 90 minutes, but I'm going to stay with the 60 minute for now. I think we'll be all right. I am going to force carb. Let's add our fermentables. Pale Tiro. And we'll add... Maybe 17 pounds for now, which brought us up to 4.4 already. So that's cool. Yeah, that kind of actually makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. We can even go. Let's go. Um, let's go 18 pounds, and then do the carm. We'll do the. Let's do the care pills. The freaking crap is it? Yeah. No, that's what I want. So we'll just add a pound of that, and then we'll add. Um, so I want to add caramel eighty, and we'll do. So it. Uh, one, what is it? One to one to two pounds per one to two pounds one one to two pounds per five gallon batch. So, let's go with three for now. We're already over, so I need to bring my. Um... Wow, dude! What did I? It's ten gallon batch. Really? Okay. Wow. I didn't know I'd only have to put 15 pounds of pail in there. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then chocolate. Let's 
said United Kingdom chocolate because this is a UK beer. <laughs> Be one third, so we'll just do one pound for now and see what that does. Brought us up to 5.1, color to that. Yeah, let's go. Let's see where we're at. So, oh, and the, the, the BUGU should be about 0.58 when we do our um, our hops. So, okay, we're at 5.30 right now, or 8, 8.30 on the East Coast. Let's see. So, our hops, we're going to just use – I'm going to do um, – I know what I'm going to do. I just, not on top of my head. I can't. Actually. Goldings and Fuggles. I'm making everyone uh, sick, aren't I? Okay, so we'll go ahead and do... 60 minutes. See, they had some are like, I don't know, man. I don't even want to get into that right now. So, so we have up to 35 IBUs that we can use. Of course, we want to balance what we have in percentage of uh, alcohol and stuff. So, um, let's just see what two does to me because it's a low alpha. That brought it up to 19.4. Since it's such a low alpha, it's bringing me at, what did I say was the uh, 48 or whatever the fuck? 58, okay. Okay, we'll stop there, and then what I'll do, this is a 10-gallon batch, not a 5. So three ounces of that, low alpha, and then we'll go to, uh, I was thinking we'll lamb it, because you can technically use American-style English hops, whatever the fuck. You know, if they're an English variety grown in America, it's not, it doesn't have to be grown in England. Um, as long as they have the same profile and same alphas and same flavor, for, you know, all that shit. Fuggles, though. Let's go with Fuggles. I could do Sterling. Oh, Sterling's more of a... That's a higher alpha, I think. Sterling, Sterling, Sterling. Where are you? Yeah, that's hella higher. If I could use Sterling at the at the, at the the 60 minute if I wanted to. But we're going to go Fuggles. Okay, get your alphabets right, beer man. Um, we'll go to the UK Fuggle, and we'll add an ounce at 15 minutes. Brought me up to well over. So let's come down. If I'm going to do that, we'll come down until I come to – see, 58.60, that's kind of a reasonable – that's perfect, though. Three quarters of Fuggles at 15 minutes, 2.75 ounces of Golding, East Kent Golding at 60 minutes. Keeps it at 0.58 on the BUGE ratio, which sounds to me like it's pretty balanced. So um, let's get this in here before I forget. It could be Campton Tablets or uh, Irish Moss, actually kind of the same thing. Um, but we'll go ahead and add one teaspoon at 15 minutes, I thought it says 10. Um, okay. Uh, yeast, 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 yeast. Yeast would be, I'm gonna go with, I was thinking using the London one by, uh, White, is it White Labs? White Labs, London. And we'll just – I could do one package and just do a starter, I guess, but we'll put two for now, and I'll think about it. But, I, I mean, right there is simply your porter. 0.58 BUGUs. We're at 4.9%, which I could even go a little higher if I wanted to. 
Um, I honestly could go up more on my pail and bring it to a 5%. Come up here, 5.9. See, it fucks it up a little, but it, a little over is not going to kill it. I can go two and a half aromas, flavors, if I wanted to, right there, right? 2.5 and then one and a half ounces at 15 minutes to add flavor and aroma of Fuggles, which is an awesome smell. Um, I mean, of course, everything needs to be balanced in this particular style of beer. 5% sounds like a reasonably cool ABV. This was 5.4. Um, as long as you got your body, that porter is going to taste like a champion. So let's stick with this. I'm good with it. <laughs> yeah, right? The last one was way hard, dude. Well, for me it was, but it took me some time. Not an hour or half hour, should I say. All right. <laughs> I fucking like it. I'm going to have to put that. You're going to, I'm not, now I got to pick my own. You don't got to copyright it, so I'm going to have to take that and put it on shirt. <laughs> I absolutely love that right there. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> All right. So for 536, cool. We got enough time to uh, to do this. Let's do one more beer review. I'm doing an American Porter, which are a little more, it's, you know, I think they're kind of fairly almost even the same, but it would almost be based on like their hoppiness, their bitterness levels, and maybe what malts they're using. I just a thought. Y'all have seen this one. This is an American Porter by Deschutes. I think they're pretty, they go everywhere. I didn't want to do that one on a review though. This one was about a $6 beer by Puhala. They're from, uh, where are they from, Norway or something like that? Oh, 11,000 watching. <laughs> it's always a good thing to be optimistic. <laughs> Love you, Brian, man. You're awesome. Um, so let's uh, – <laughs> absurd you assumed that. No, seriously. <laughs> No, it's actually they're out of uh, no, they're they're actually. Let me tell you where they're at. They're out of Estonia, is where uh, Tallinn, Estonia, um, which is kind of over there. I think. <sighs> okay, it's a. Uh, I didn't tell you what it was. Served at 50, uh, 54 to sixty degrees. It's definitely colder than that, but that's okay. Seven point eight percent. It's a. Uh, it's called the Musk Cold Porter. It's an American porter, American made, poor American style porter. Show the logo. It looks like a vagina, vagina, like a dirty vagina. Um, okay, so <laughs> or a shriveled up. I'm not gonna go there. Um, okay, so. As I'm pouring this, like a sugary legginess, it's crazy. This these guys are known for their like body, like body. These things got body. They got they got style. I mean, this is different now, and it's higher pro, higher performance, high high ABV, two finger head. Oh yeah. Mmm, that's punchy on the chocolate. Kind of more of a milk chocolate sweetness. A brown sugar, brown bread. A little molasses. A little tobacco coming out of that. Tobacco, yeah. Uh, dried tobacco, cured tobacco. Mmm, that smells good. A little vanilla in there. Even a little, uh, almost, I want to say they barrel aged this because it's got a, I don't know if they did it in whiskey barrels or what, but it's got kind of a um, spirit feel a uh, smell to it yeah let's uh tan head cocoa head dark black opaque dark brown very dark opaque can't see through it it's got a medium to fast rising bubble 
Let's drink it. Mm. Kind of a cherry. There's a cherry feel to this, a taste to this, as far as the fruit, like a black cherry or something. Got a, uh, a, a, a baker's chocolate bitterness in the back, that dryness. Um, it's a it's a, me a, a medium long uh, finish. Uh, really lets you taste this. Rolls up on the roof of the mouth, on the palate, all over. You're getting this um, like tobacco-y feel, like a tobacco taste is, is kind of in there. And, uh, you're getting um, like a rich caramel. You're getting your uh, like a chart, like a there's hardcore chocolate. And uh, and a little bit of coffee, a little espresso in there, a little rougher uh, than this one. Oh, much rougher. Sticky lips, hiding the alcohol very well. Smooth and. Stupid internet. Leather. That's a good one. Very leathery. It does have that leather. Thanks, Nina. It does have the, uh, and welcome. <coughs> it does have the leather. There's uh, like a fresh leather, like a fresh belt. Or fresh leather shoe. When you, when you go and you smell in the shoe, and you get that leather like <clears throat> with the shoe kind of smell. I don't know, like nice dress shoes. Oh man, this is good. Out of five hops, I'm gonna give this at 4.75 hops. I've got a cough right now. <laughs> okay, okay, man, this is good. This is really good beer. So, um, cool, man. This went well today. I was pretty excited. Um, got some great people in here. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, that one went well, I think. I think I'll hopefully I'll make it well, but um. But yeah, yeah, 4.75, dude. This is a straight up almost a five. I'm sure there's, like Nina said it before, there's always better beers. And that really helps with your, with, with, it's helped with my scoring. Um, always doing fives and shit, you know. There's always something better, but when something is right there, you gotta put it close to that five. You know what I mean? Kyle, cheers, man. All right. <laughs> Sour Trapel. Nine nine A B oh yeah yay a sour tripel <laughs> super dry chardonnay brew <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right guys gals gal my only gal in here I think I don't know <laughs> I'm pretty sure um but no I love you guys thank you so much chat you guys are always uh so awesome man just uh su super support. And uh, I'm going to head over to Beer Chugs and see if he's got an available spot. So I'm going to end this and get over there. If you guys want to follow, um, please uh, join us over there. I'll share him out on my community as well. But you guys have a, have a good night, day, wherever you're at. And uh, Drunken One, oh, yeah. What's up, buddy? All right, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers, Nina. Cheers, miscellaneous. Kyle, right on. I uh, can't forget Brian. Cheers, bro. <clears throat> All right, guys. Cheers. See you over there. Bye. Bye.